again, it's not it's not just about fonts and colors, you know. It's it's about um, there's a big job to do. It's about talking to people. Hi there, everybody. This is Mario. Welcome to another episode of Design Interview 10 Questions, where we interview designers and design experts from all around the world. Today's guest is Joshua Breidenbach. He is the co-founder of Rice Studio in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So, welcome, Joshua. Thanks for being here. Thank you. It's, uh, it's really an honor, Mario. I really appreciate what you're doing in the the episodes have been amazing so far. So thanks for doing this. Thank you very much. Um, if you don't mind, I would uh, go on with the initial question, which is what made you become a designer? Okay. Um, there's a number of things that uh, contributed to it, I think. Um, maybe the, the first thing is really family, actually. Um, sort of in our blood. Um, my, my mother's a, an artist. Uh, her sister is an artist. Uh, my father is a industrial designer. He spent most of his career, um, doing furniture design. He worked for quite a while at Knoll, uh, really amazing, uh, furniture company with an incredible history. Um, and, uh, I think I was exposed to these kinds of things growing up and um, uh, always, you know, pretty curious about the way things are made, the way things uh, look and why. My, uh, my father ended up at one point working with um, Massimo Vignelli on uh, Vignelli's handkerchief chair. Uh, it's like a really iconic piece from them. And this, my, my dad has a really funny story about working with Vignelli because uh, he had a, a really specific uh, idea to get across with this chair, which is that it's it's a flying piece of fabric. So the base was to be extremely, extremely minimal. And the sketch from Vignelli passed through uh, my dad's hands and my dad kind of realized that the base wasn't gonna get past the engineers because it, it wasn't gonna support enough weight. So uh, my dad, ended up adding this little crossbar, which connects the first, the, 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 the sliders, the, the sleds or whatever of the chair. And he was really worried to bring this back to Vignelli. Um, but uh, apparently Vignelli approved it, it went through. So there were these kinds of stories, who is this person, Massimo Vignelli? Um, he ended up coming to one of the schools I studied at. I studied for uh, a time at the University of Cincinnati has an amazing um, design curriculum. Um, and Vignelli came and, and I became obsessed with, you know, the, the five typefaces that uh, Vignelli demanded. Um, and, um, you know, it's all so inspirational. And, and I think beyond that, um, just this whole idea of, you know, being able to communicate and touch many, many people with a message, um, with um, the combination of words and image, the power of that, um, I started to kind of realize how, how beautiful um, and important that can be. Um, later on, uh, you know, I was studying design, um, really, really um, obsessed with um, design history and um, but then I started to get a little bit more practical. I, I was offered um, an internship at Landor Associates in Cincinnati. And, and I met um, the senior designer there at the time. His name uh, is Ramin Islami. And, you know, he started to introduce me to more like strategy, brand architecture, and these things that sort of really put more purpose to, to, the, to the design and, 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 and create more tools and, and things that, help people solve problems. And all of these things, you know, really added up to me really knowing that this is what I wanted to do. I'm, I'm a rather reserved person, but I've always wanted to like, you know, use my talents to, to, to prob problem solve and, 
communicate with people. And, and, and we've been lucky enough here at Rice to communicate with, with many, many, many people through, through design. Um, so yeah, without getting too into it, I mean, there's, there's other influences in there. I, um, one more story is it's from another, you know, design hero, um, Lance Wyman, who, um, I have a funny story. Uh, I ended up referencing his Mexico city Olympic identity, 1968. I referenced that for my thesis project in school and I, I was really busy on the project. It was kind of a main reference for a few reasons. And um, I didn't really realize it at the time, but somebody in my class had arranged that um, Lance Wyman come to our school and do a talk and some portfolio reviews and things like that. So here he just kind of like showed up. I didn't even know about it. I was, I was researching his work and then suddenly the guy is here and, you know, we hung out and were able to have some beers together and um, just another kind of huge milestone for me, for like kind of like meeting this person who sort of embodies like everything I cared about with design and also kind of like going abroad, going, going to Mexico, going out of his comfort zone and sort of like um, creating all this incredible work. Um, so I wanted to bring that up as another, probably uh, uh, another reason why I became a designer. Of course, it's it's many many things. But um, what is design for you? Is a way to communicate with other people? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's it's about people. Uh, I think design is um, it's communication. It's a way for for all of us to connect um, around you know simple strong messages and hopefully, you know, um, positive or informative messages. I think um, design has such a huge, huge role to play in, in society and it always has. Um, and uh, that's, you know, it's really exciting to be a part of that. It's, um, you know, every time I'm working on something, I, I'm asking myself how it can be the most inspiring, the most simple the most easy to to uh, get across to somebody else, um, you know, it's it's really a tool. it's a tool. It's a functional practice. Um, um, of course, it's visual and it can be beautiful. It can be you know diverse and 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 so much about aesthetics. But I really look at it as a as a functional a functional tool um, to do grand and amazing things. I, I love referencing things like um, um, the war is over campaign, if you want it, from John Lennon and Yoko Ono. I mean, I remember looking at that as a kid and it's just type on a black type on a white background. That's kind of like the joy and power of graphic design, right? It, it doesn't need to be more than that. And, um, it's so powerful. And, um, you know, you can talk to millions of people. And um, when you are designing something, what, what do you think like you create as a designer behind, of course, the, the surface of your artwork? Yeah. Um, we're, trying to, uh, we're trying to tell stories. I mean, um, I think with our client work, the day-to-day -day work, um, we're really picking and choosing the types of businesses, the types of people we, we partner with. Um, we were working with people that inspire us greatly. And, and, and we think that they have something that um, we can broadcast or we can, uh, you know, build upon to, to inspire, inspire others out there. Um, so I think um, what we create are sort of encapsulated stories that get somebody through the door or get somebody to, you know, want to learn more about that thing. Um, we're kind of our, our client's biggest fans. Uh, it's, it's really a rule around here that, you know, we're just um, working with amazing um, organizations and companies that are making a difference. Um, you know, maybe they're 
changing things radically or they're changing things, you know, just a little bit at a time, small improvements. And we're sort of jumping in with them and, and, and making it easier or faster or grander for them. Um, and that's really important in it. It's, it's culture, it's cultural. It's, it's, um, we believe, you know, we're, we're making a difference because um, we're working with other people that are making a difference and making, making a noise that um, is a good thing, a uh, good noise to hear. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, before we started, uh, you told me like uh, in the studio, you are around 25 people. So a big yeah. studio. And how does it work when you start a new project? Do you all guys meet together and you make a brainstorming or something like that? Or is something different? Um, it's different from case to case. Um, a lot of times we sort of know who's going to be a great team for that project. Um, there's usually one of the creative directors, uh, maybe one or two other designers and our project managers are, are basically strategists. And um, we like to keep it pretty lean um, when we start on a project, um, keep like it all about the research in the beginning, you know, it's everybody, the designer, everyone is digging into the problem at hand or, um, you know, what uh, we can dig up about um, the industry or the background. And it's usually like pretty much left to those people to really uh, discover something. Um, and we'll do intermittent crits with a bigger group as it goes on, you know, to prove things kind of. We, there's a lot of, um, hey, look at this. I want to prove this to you. You know, that's the kind of attitude of the designer here. Um, of course, taking all the feedback on board and taking criticism well. But, um, you know, if it doesn't sort of um, prove itself as a you know, concept or an idea or design to the bigger group, then there's an issue and then we can work it out together. Um, But I think generally, you know, from project to project, we sort of um, form like a, a nice little core team. It's, um, it's strategy, design. Um, and at some point along the way, it may get um, the, the production team in. And the production team have their finger on what kinds of things we can do. Um, what are the options available for our clients to sort of um, maybe create more sustainable packaging or smarter packaging, just less, you know, we're really about less design. Let's do the least amount of things possible to have the greatest effect. And um, the production team is really good to bring in at a certain point, maybe not always from the beginning because they can really just cast a critical eye on it and say, that's, there's too many things going on here. That's going to be too expensive. You know, that's one great constraint. Um, tighter budgets aren't necessarily a bad thing. So Uh, yeah, it sort of gets uh, passed around the studio. Um, at different it. Um, our studio is also like wide open and one entire wall is just boards where the work goes up. So there's a lot of people passing by and making comments. So that's also handy. And is, is there a specific part of the process that really interests you? Me, uh, particularly, I'm very, very interested in um, this early part. We tend to call it like a brand profile, uh, for the lack of a better term. This is, this is about when we've finished our research. We've, um, we feel that we've dug something up that's really core to that business, um, really unique. Uh, really special and we go about sort of defining in words that um, organization's mission, um, their vision, um, their values, all of these core foundational things that without them, there would be no uh, business or no drive. Those things are so precious and important, I believe, um, 
that I, I put a lot of focus in on that. Um, I'm not always the creative director on every project. Um, we have enough incredibly talented people here to do that. But I am looking carefully at this portion of our projects. And, you know, we, we write these pieces of information again for our clients and we turn them back to them and we say, is this right? Is this, is this what you believe? Which is a tricky, you know, scenario. And, um, you know, if we've got it right, then um, all the inspiration can come from that. The design, um, you know, maybe, maybe um, a future that the client could reach quicker or didn't even envision all of these really powerful um, things. So I, I'm looking for that opportunity. I'm looking for that power. Um, and it may just be in, in a mission statement. And I love that often this brand profile, we call it, we, we give that to the client and they're often using that to train their teams or inspire their teams. This is us. This is what we're all about. This is really simple and makes sense, right? This is something that we can all rally around. This is something that we can also broadcast out into the world. Um, we want it to be um, almost just public. You know, this is what this company is all about. It's, um, finding that transparency, finding that, yeah, I, I, I tend to use the word power, just that, um, that really special thing that drives everything else, whether it's just um, growth or design um, or um, recruitment. Yeah. I love that. I think it's the most exciting thing. It's, you know, I, I, I take that not lightly at all. There's a lot of responsibility there to be helping our partners uh, discover those things. And do you think perfection exists in design? Um, I tend, I tend to think that, um, that part of our process can be, I guess, perfect. Like, uh, it's a tricky word, isn't it? Um, if that, if we've made a discovery, um, and we are able to sort of work on strategy that is really inspiring to everyone in the room. And, and, and starting to inspire people around it, then I think that part is perfect. It's, uh, if it's inspiring the designers to nail the design, you know, oh, well, this is what they're all about. So these things that I'm creating make sense. They all point back to what it's all about. Then I think there's some perfection there. Um, you know, I, when you ask that question, I, the mind kind of tends to race towards the end of design and think about design perfection. Um, and I don't think that that's actually ever going to happen. I mean, things are constantly evolving and changing and changing hands. And, but, um, but if the concept is really there, if that, and the ideas pop out and the design makes sense, I think there's a, an element of perfection there. And I think, Maybe it's that thing that sort of delineates like a, a really successful project from a project that just has been given design, um, you know, been given a, a look or something. And um, today is a particular moment um, in, I mean, talking about design. Do you, what do you think about the contemporary scene of design? Of graphic design. Graphic design. Um, I think it's great. Um, you know, I'm. I guess as as I'm getting a little bit older, I'm I've realized that I've put myself in a lucky situation where I'm constantly surrounded by young designers, um, and it just keeps me totally thrilled. Um, uh, I, 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 I get to see a lot of things through them that I may not 
you know, pick up on my own. Um, I tend to look, I tend to look back at design. I tend to look, um, at, um, yeah, history. Actually, I, I don't look at that much design. I, I look at history, art history, nature, things like that. And then when it gets to design sort of, um, I guess older things, but, um, I'm always kind of looking for, for things that are timeless or whatever that is. And, 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 and um, not, you know, really trendy things, but I, and I, but I love all the things that are coming in and out of the studio and we don't, we don't really have a style around here. We're not really judging anything. We, we really want our designers here to feel that that's their work. Um, even if it's, even if sometimes we, you know, we see that it has quite a bit of expression that maybe I wouldn't have done. I mean, if it works, it works. Um, I think trends are something that I tend to avoid. However, trends have always existed. It's always been trends and trends are good because they push things forward. You know, if, if one thing is in style right now, I mean, look at design from the fifties, sixties, seventies, eighties, they, they all have, you can, you can look at them and say that's designed from, from then because they were all kind of following their own trends. So I don't know. It's, I love what's going on right now because people are pushing things. People are experimenting. People are trying new stuff and it's, it's limitless and never ending. And Yeah. And um, do you, what, what do you think about the impact internet had on design? Internet. Oh man, uh, it's the greatest invention ever, right? Uh, design is just conveying information, and now we have access to so much more information. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's been profound. Um, you know, ever since the internet came out, I remember being in, I was in high school when the internet came out. Um, and it, that was already affecting you know, the look of things. Um, um, so maybe I can bring it to a little bit of my context. So I, I live and work in Ho Chi Minh city, Vietnam, and I've been looking at portfolios here for um, 12 years. And when I moved here, when I moved here, I was, I was working as an art director at an advertising agency and I was, I was hiring people. I was looking at a lot of portfolios and I guess I saw um, a lot of emulation back then. Um, you know, definitely stuff that was seen on the internet um, sort of, um, emulating and it was, it was like frustrating. And then at times, and we would, we would interview these designers and ask them why, like, what's their point of view on, 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 on something. So like, there's always this, like, um, this thing in design, I guess, where there's this danger of emulating and, and not actually investigating and finding something fresh and new, um, and just getting attracted to something aesthetically which, you know, we've all been guilty of in, in our life. Um, um, and that was probably just due to things opening up quickly and, and fast, faster and faster and, and, and designers seeing all of this great stuff out there and like sort of getting a handle on it and getting a hang on it. I mean, design education here is not like in the West. It's just, which is great. You know, it's actually like completely refreshing. I mean, um, ask a young designer back then if they know, knew who Massimo Vignelli was or any of these old guys. And no, nobody knew it didn't matter. Um, and I think, you know, that was like, that's kind of really interesting and kind of really good in a way. Uh, and, um, but now everyone may know who that is. And then there's a, I think it's, there's been time for those things to sort of absorb and then time for people to say, 
okay, that's cool. What about what we think, you know? Um, and the internet just accelerated that. Um, and you, yeah. you just, sorry, please. You go, please. Um, you just mentioned um, the design education um, in, in that part of the, of the planet. And how, what, what do you think about that design education? Um, well, I can only speak for here in, in Vietnam. There, there's, um, there's great schools, you know, all around the region. Um, uh, I can only speak about, uh, Vietnam because I've interacted with the universities and I've done a lot of portfolio reviews and spoken and things like that. And, you know, it's kind of like, it's, I think it's finding itself. Um, I think, I think, uh, rightfully they're sort of questioning, uh, the design education that maybe you or I had, where, you know, I think they're sort of getting, they're looking at it like, well, design history. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a Western construct. It's, it's just coming from, you know, Europe or something. Um, and it's, and it was really important to us. Uh, we learned a lot, uh, from that. Um, but there's more, there's more to the story. There's much more. And uh, I think it's really important that the universities acknowledge that and bring a lot more into the curriculum. Uh, that's, that's a lot to ask because maybe it hasn't been always um, uh, brought to the surface or, or considered like really, you know, part of uh, curriculum. So um, there's that. It, all, the, some of the interactions I've had with the universities here, like it's a little bit more, a little bit more on practical uh, uh, skills, uh, you know, learning programs and that sort of thing. But I see a move, a, a move towards uh, conceptual thinking, uh, which is, you know, really I, I the most important thing before the tools and, and all of that. I think anybody can just pick that up on the internet now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's complicated. Um, um, I think, I guess all universities are constantly kind of looking at how they can do things better and, um, and uh, be more relevant. And regarding the, the role of the designer in the future, where do you see the graphic designer, for example, in a few years, for example? Wow. Um, um, well, I, <laughs> uh, of course, I, th I think it's extremely important. Um, the transmitting of information in an ever more universal sense, not that that really exists either, but ever more um, um, smart, direct, um, transparent. Um, I, you know, I think designers in general sort of are designing the future. They're looking forward maybe more than, um, some and therefore, um, should really, you know, have a voice, um, you know, I think, all right, so with our, our work, our clients are concerned with their day-to-day -day, uh, needs, you know, making the bottom line, making the best product they can. Maybe, maybe it involves machines. Maybe it involves uh, anything, you name it. But what we're looking at is how 
what they're doing can interact with people's lives and can um, inspire those people uh, even, you know, around just a simple product. Uh, it's, it's like a much, a very human kind of thinking. It's like a, it's human focused. It's, and it's um, culturally and inspiration focused. Um, and, and I think we have that understanding with our clients where it's, you guys have a lot of things going on, a lot of work to do, and it's very important. You focus on that. And we're focusing on this other thing, which maybe is equally important. And I, I think, um, you know, everyone here knows that they're not just creating uh, design. I think design is a, uh, a word that has a, a lot more of a deep meaning than people usually think about. Anyways, um, we're doing something bigger than that. And I, and I think our clients understand that where um, it's about, yeah, it's about that, that without that right communication, without that right interaction with the audience, with those people out there, nothing's going to happen and we can make it so much more profound and so much more meaningful. Um, and our clients get that. Um, and, you know, even if, um, even if it's tricky when, when we make a new relationship, um, going through the process and seeing results has changed minds. And I, I think what I'm sort of circling around is designers have an enormous role in, in the future. They're, they're building the future every day. And, and all they want to do is, you know, build a better and, and richer, um, more meaningful future with their work. Um, so uh, it's a big question. I, I, maybe I answered it partially. <laughs> <laughs> and um, today um, we, we get to the last question. And today um, oh, wow. we, we, we are facing this um, really bad moment. Um, fortunately, in Vietnam, you told me it's going a bit better and things mm -hmm. are improving. That's good. But do you think as, as a designers, we, we can do something for this moment? Or maybe now we are in a phase where we can also thinking about in case of other situations like this? Um, so the question is, uh, can what, designers do more? If we can help in this moment, in this global pandemic? So much, so much. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, things like this, uh, that you're doing, this is a great, a great thing. Um, opening up conversation. I've been asked to do, um, a couple things like this since the situation started and, um, it's, it, it, as terrible as the situation is, if we can just put that aside, looking on the bright side, um, there's so many positive things, um, that we can try to focus on, you know, giving people time to stop and think about what they're doing day to day. And if, 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 if people are looking around a little bit more, um, I think designers can have a role in um, getting messages across about, you know, um, other opportunities, other ways to see things. Um, uh, my mind just boggles at the question. Uh, you know, I could go, I could go very, um, straightforward and, you know, just getting information across about this situation. You know, it's very confusing. It's a very confusing situation in a lot of ways. And graphic design is the greatest thing to make things simple and make sense. Um, look at some of the amazing infographics that have been created through, you know, New York times or, or whatever. Um, and then, you know, just, um, you know, I, I'm personally, I love Instagram. I think it's just this incredible platform, um, you know, seeing, 
you know, I know every time I open it up, I'm 50% or more of what I am going to see is about the current situation. And, and um, you know, some things really catch your eye. Uh, a lot of people pitching in and um, creating platforms like, um, you know, student portfolio reviews um, and, uh, you know, people are sort of like banding together. I, I, I almost equate it to like the, the hippie movement in the sixties and sort of like people getting like strong messages out there um, of positivity or, or a protest or, or this or that. And it's all graphic design, um, all, you know, messages of how humanity can band together and help each other. You know, as a professional graphic designer, I can help people by, reviewing their portfolios and help them improve their work and hopefully help them uh, get a job in a tricky time or, you know, as, as small as that may be, um, you know, there's been all of these great efforts around things like that in our industry. Um, and it just goes on and on and on. Um, of course, I think graphic designers are incredibly, incredibly important uh, to society and, um, we're, you know, scribes, we are conveyors of information, we are transmitters of history, you know, we may reference something from the past and bring it into a contemporary context that keeps it alive and keeps it exciting and fresh. It's a, uh, it's an amazing time to be a graphic designer. I think we're very lucky to be doing this. Um, and uh, maybe we can inspire even more people to, to do that because it's, Again, it's not it's not just about fonts and colors, you know. It's it's about um, there's a big job to do. It's about talking to people. Well, thank you very much, Joshua. Thanks for your time and your participation. Thanks, Mario. Really enjoyed it. <laughs>